Hello Sidefish community and welcome back to another World Tanks console video. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a tank review of the Aja 260, the new tier 10 premium tank that just went into the game. And it's Russian, and it's heavy. Forgot to mention that, but I'm going to be comparing it, I'm going to do a tank review on it and compare it to the IS-7, which is the best candidate to go along with this tank. I think goes perfectly against I think the 260 and IS-7's rival each other. That's how similar they are, but different. So, now as you can see, this is the engine for the IS-7 the 260. The 260 is on the left side and the IS-7 is on the right side. So as you can immediately tell, the horsepower and powered, ra ra the powered ratio is better on the 260. Even the forward speed on the 260 is better, but not that much better. Reverse speed and fire chance is the same as that. So, fast, it's a faster tank. So, no longer will the IS-7 be a fast, heavy tank. The only fast, heavy tank. Well, you got the 277, but you don't really have armor. So, either way, fast, heavy tank. Is what we get for this. As before, the IS-7 is on the right and the 260 is on the left. So as you can see, the 260 gets a 122 millimeter and the IS-7 gets a 130. As we had all 122 millimeters, they will be faster than the 130s. So this is exactly what we get. If you were wondering if this and the IS-4 had a similar DPM, well, the IS-4 has a better DPM. That's the same damage as this tank, but it has a little bit faster reload. But we're not comparing those two tanks. Just putting that down there. So aiming time is better. Accuracy on the moon, accuracy is better. At 0.37, accuracy on the moon is better. Accuracy rotating the turret is better. Gun, to, gun elevation kind of sucks. It's at 15 degrees compares to the IS-7 at 18 degrees. The gun depression on both tanks completely suck at 6 degrees. When you're fighting in the 260, you really feel that 6 degrees fighting against you. Alright. Next is going to be the tracks. 260 is on the top and the IS-7 is below. We've already compared the engine. Now it's time we get on to the track. So the rotation speed is actually quicker on the IS-7 at 28 degrees compared to the 26 degree. And the terrain resistance is, is only better on the IS-7. I'm, if I remember how to read these right, the first number is soft, I mean hard, then the middle number is medium, and the last one is soft. Wait, hold on. Uh, no, I was wrong. First number is soft. Middle number is medium, third number is hard. If that is wrong, please let me know in the comment section. But I'm fairly certain that is right. So either way, the IS-7 has better terrain resistance on medium and hard. That's pretty good, especially when it's lacking in horsepower, so it kind of makes it out in terrain resistance. Alright, next is the concealment spotting and the turret and radio. So the IS-7 is on the right, 260 is on the left, and as you can see the concealment and the spotting numbers, the where you see the concealment and the spotting, right beside it says 20, 93, 19, and 89, don't worry about that because those numbers are completely useless during this comparison because I'm using a crew and equipment on the 260 and also I do not own the IS-7. It's going to be a very long time until I get the IS-7. But using the raw numbers that you can see, stationary moving V-range signal range and the other one, that's the one we're going to be comparing. So as you can see, the 260 has less concealment than the IS-7 and spotting is fairly good on both Tanks, since Russians are Russian heavy tanks are usually blind and the turret rotation speed is faster on the 260 at 26 degrees a second 
precisely 25 degrees a second on the IS-7. Now we move on to the ammunition. As always, the 260 is on the left and the IS-7 is on the right. As we begin this, the shell count for the 260 is 40 rounds and the IS-7 is 30. And the 260 fires APCR as standard, heat as premium, and high explosive as high explosive. IS-7 is AP standard and APCR premium. High explosive is, uh, is always high explosive unless it's hash. Because hash is amazing. But as you can see, the standard rounds on the 260 has really good shell velocity at 1,259. That's even faster than the IS-7's premium rounds. So you're going to be snapping some good shots in. But they are rushing accuracy. Speaking of stuff, the IS-7, I'm going to start with, the IS-7 has 490 damage, does 490 damage on its standard and premium rounds, to the 440 on the standard and premium rounds, on the 260, high explosive does 640 damage on the IS-7 and 530 on the 260. The premium, uh, the standard penetration for the 260 is 260 millimeters, and the IS-7 is 250 millimeters. The premium penetration for the 260 is 340 millimeters, and the IS-7 is 303 millimeters. And the penetration for the high explosive is both 68 millimeters penetration and the damage per minute for both tanks for the IS-7 is 2146 and the 260 barely scrapes ahead at 2182 now the IS-4 has a, has a DPM of 2200 just throwing that out there okay now we move on to the armor. As you can see, both tanks are pretty well angled. Well, pretty well armored. The IS-7 and the 260 hull armor are both 150 millimeters at the front. But the 260 looks like it has a better angled frontal armor. So it should be able to bounce in shots more than the IS-7 on its hull. But the IS-7 definitely has a better turret here covered all in red and the 150 millimeters of armor is all around on the 260 in the IS-7's hull. It's 150 at the front and 150 at the side on both tanks. So you should be able to side scrape in this tank pretty reliably but both of these tanks have pipe nose so the best thing you can do is go hold down and just hide your lower glacier spike at the best possibility you can do it may be a little bit of side scraping but don't show your pike nose or you're just going to get obliterated when you're side scraping so now i'm done comparing the two tanks now we get to go into some gameplay of the 260 which has been long awaited now and i'll see y'all there Alright, so we just spawned on Westfield, and well, now I'm going to drive. So 260, like I said while explaining the armor, you should really play this tank. Like, hold down, hide your hull, hide your lower glacier plate, and just deal damage. Also remember, you also have a little controller at the top, which is very small, so that's why I didn't really point it out. As you can see right here, you can barely see it. It's super small, but people can still hit it-ish. You don't really have to worry about it, but you just got to keep it in mind. The controller is only 100 millimeter, 120 millimeters thick. So they can go through your 
so they'll be able to go through it if they can. But it's really good angle, so I don't see them going through it, so. Just keep an eye on it. Remember about the level compiler on top. So, yeah. Also, I'm going to be doing a video on this tank. Reasons why you should buy this tank and reasons why you should not buy this tank. And they will be coming up tomorrow. And go watch those. If you want to buy it or if you're on the line, those videos are for people that are on the line. It's like, ooh, I don't want to buy it, but I don't. But I do want to buy it. So that's what those videos are for. And also, remember, this is a premium tier 10, tier 10 premium thing that you can get for XP. They aren't always going to be on the tech tree, so you don't have to really worry about... You don't really have to worry about them going away. So there's an IS-7. The E-5 was able to pin us through the upper glacius plate because angles. IS-7 is right there. And guess what, I-7? I know something that you don't. I know your ammo. And guess what? I already hit you once in the ammo. So... Bye. <laughs> I love doing that. I love doing that. So, really, you should play this thing like an I-7. It's really, really played like an I-7. There's an I-4 which just ricocheted off the side of the armor. You should play this tank more like an IS-7, but use the gun as the IS-4. The penetration and the damage and the reload are the same, really close to the IS-4. Very, very similar to the IS-4. But the armor and the playstyle of the tank is like the IS-7. So this is like a tank that a tank that's mixed between them. So if you like the gun on the IS-4, but you like the playstyle of the IS-7, this is the tank for you. But right now, as you can see, this team is completely losing. And we rated 2,281 damage so far. And kind of stuck in our crossfire right here. Because there's tanks over... There's a tank behind me, and there's a couple of tanks over here. There's a conker. Also, remember, you have a .4 accuracy, so you ain't really gonna hit long distances. So, don't, .37, don't really be aiming at far distances. But, when they're short to mid ranges, you should be able to hit pretty good. And like I said, you got to keep your armor straightforward on them. I know how it looks. You're like, Logan, why are you featuring this replay as your tank review? Well, we may be down to 31 hit points. We may be losing. But this video, this battle, is not over yet. There are plenty of tanks to do damage. There's plenty of tanks to re-efficient off. There's the Conqueror put a good shot into him. So basically, the reason I wanted to focus this replay is because it shows you what to do in the tank and it also shows you what not to do. It shows you that when you use your turn armor, and try to go hold down against tank could work really really well but when you expose your chassis like your hull and stuff like that people start pinning you and don't fire also when you start firing at long ranges you don't always hit every single time but you can still do damage you need to choose this tank like a short to mid to short range 
and keep your armor hidden at all times. Except your tyrant armor and also watch out for your Capulic. So we're down at the 5500 damage. There's a WZ120 right there. 6,000 damage right here. And I s now me and this other tank is the only one left. Are we going to be able to pull this off? Well, no. But, I'm going to put a couple more shots in and I over angled my armor to the Centurion action team. And he takes us out. Can we lose? So this was actually one of my best, one of my best replays in the tank after 25 battles. It went pretty good. Did 6,371 damage. We got a third mastery badge for 6,371 damage. We got two kills, 1,180 block. Apparently people are really playing this tank good. And we got top of the leaderboards when our team was doing nothing. But anyway, if you like this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, remember to like fish because why would you not? And peace out. See you guys.